Hi everyone and welcome back to Coding with Flutter. Today we are going to do a comparison of different state management techniques. And to do that we are going to use a simple demo app that I built to enable anonymous signing with Firebase. So the way this app works is that it shows a signing button and when this is pressed we are signed in and then we are taken to a home page where we can log out. So this is a very simple flow because it is based on anonymous signing, but you could consider using this same flow for other signing methods. And if you use things like email and password signing, then you would have a more complex UI on this screen. So on this video, we're going to focus on one very specific requirement, and that is that we should have a loading state while signing is in progress. And as you can see, when I press on the signing button, then a circular progress indicator appears. And in addition to that, the signing button is disabled so that we can't perform another request to signing while the previous one is in progress. And in general, when we want the user to wait for the completion of some asynchronous operation, then it is a good idea to have a loading state like this because it makes our app more robust. And this diagram on the left shows a state machine for our authentication flow. And here, each circle is one of the possible states of our system, and each arrow is an event that causes the system to move to a new state. So the signing page that you can see on my simulator can toggle between two possible states. And if signing succeeds, then we are taken to the home page where we have an option to sign out. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is implemented in code. And first of all, I want to show a widget called signing page navigation. And this widget is responsible for showing a scaffold with a nap bar. And then it has a drawer menu, which is what we use to switch between the different options. And when each option is selected, then the title of the app bar is updated accordingly and the body of the scaffold uses this method that returns different widgets depending on which option we have selected. So in the rest of the video, we are going to do a comparison of all these different approaches and we will see how to handle the loading state with each of them. And while I have chosen to demo a simple problem with just two possible states, this is a good testing ground to compare different techniques in practice. Okay, so we can start off by checking a vanilla implementation that doesn't have any loading state at all. And this is our reference implementation. And as you can see, all it does is to show a button inside a center widget. And when the button is pressed, it calls this method to sign in anonymously. And in here we use a provider to get an object of type auth service, which is nothing more than a wrapper for the Firebase authentication APIs. And then we call this method to sign in. And because this method could throw an exception, then we surround this code with a try and catch block so that we can show an error if signing fails. By the way, the actual authentication state of the user is handled by a different widget called landing page, which is used to decide whether to show this signing page or the home page. But for now, I don't want to focus on this as I have already explained this flow in previous videos. So for now, all we need to know is that when signing succeeds, then the home page is presented. But this is not a concern of the signing page. Okay, so let's see how we can implement the loading state with various techniques. And the first one that I want to talk about is set state. And the way this works is that we define our page as a stateful widget. And inside the state class, we have a boolean is loading variable, which is initially set to false. And this variable is used to set the loading argument of this signing button, and also to disable the button when loading is true. Okay, so when the button is pressed, we can call this method to sign in. And the first thing that we do is to set the loading state to true inside a call to set state. And this causes a rebuild of the widget so that the button can be updated with the new state. And then we get our old object and we use it to sign in as usual. And at the end, we have this finally statement, which is executed after the code in the try block has run, 
either by succeeding or by throwing an exception. And this ensures that we set the loading state back to false. So adding a loading state with a stateful widget and set state was relatively simple because all we had to do was to convert our widget to a stateful widget and then declare a local state variable and use it inside our build method and update it before and after the call to sign in. Okay, so let's move on. And the next technique that I'm going to show is block. So over here, I have declared a sign in block class. And what this class does is to define a loading stream controller and make its stream property available via this loading stream getter variable. And then I've added a helper method that I can use to add a new loading state to our stream controller. And then I have a signing page block, which is a stateless widget. And this takes this signing block as an argument in the constructor. So in order for this page to work, it needs to be given an instance of signing block. And for that purpose, I have added a static create method, which is used to create a provider of sign-in block. And then I use this in combination with a consumer of sign-in block so that I can get the block and pass it on to the sign-in page block widget. So this entire method is just boilerplate code that we need to ensure that our widget has a parent provider of sign-in block and that the block is disposed when the widget is unmounted from the widget tree. And in order to create this widget correctly, we need to call this with signin page block dot create with context inside the parent widget. And just to be clear, in this example, the signin block contains the actual logic to manage the loading state, and the provider gives us access to the signin block so that we can use it in our widget. So this is a typical example of how we can use block together with provider. Next, we can move over to the build method. And as we can see, here we have a stream builder which takes the block.loading stream as an input and uses the initial data argument to set the initial loading state to false. And then the builder gives us a snapshot that we can use to extract the loading state so that we can use it to configure our signing button. And when we press the button, we call this method. And this is very similar to the previous implementation that was using set state. In fact, the only difference is that here we call block.setIsLoading of true and block.setIsLoading of false rather than set state directly. So the way this code works is that every time we call block.setLoading, then a new value is added to the stream and our stream builder is called as a result so that we can build our sign-in button with the loading state from the snapshot. By the way, a lot of projects use Rx start together with block. And one of the reasons for this is that Rx start gives us a special kind of stream controller, which is called a behavior subject. And behavior subject is very useful when we want to get synchronous access to the latest value of the stream. And in a lot of cases, we need to compute our state as a function of an event and the previous state. So if we want to keep track of the previous state, we can do that manually inside the block, or we could use a behavior subject instead. However, for this case, we don't need to know the value of the previous state in order to calculate the new one. So we don't need a rec start in this example. Okay, so let's now move to the next technique, which is value notifier. And here we have a signing page value notifier widget, which is a stateless widget that takes a value notifier as a constructor argument. And value notifier is a generic class that can be used to hold a single value and to notify some listeners when this value changes. So let's see how we can use this. Over here, I have added a static create method, just like I did for the block example. And in here, I return a change notifier provider, which is a special kind of provider. And I use this builder to return a value notifier of bool with an initial value of false. And then I create a consumer of value notifier of bool. And this consumer has a builder, which is called every time the value inside the value notifier changes. In other words, by using a change notifier provider and a consumer with a value notifier, 
I can ensure that this widget is rebuilt every time the value changes. So all I have to do in the build method is to use loading.value to configure the signing button. And whenever I need to update the loading state, I can do so by saying loading.value equals true or false as needed. So once again, this method to sign in anonymously is very similar to the previous examples and the only thing that changes is the syntax that we use to update the loading state. By the way, the change notifier provider class works with objects that implement change notifier. And you might be wondering what is the difference between value notifier and change notifier. And I think the best way to explain this is to show how value notifier is implemented. So I can open the documentation for value notifier. And as we can see, this is a class that extends change notifier and implements value listenable. And all it does is to hold the value of type T and then it has a getter to retrieve that value and a setter which is used to update the value and call notify listeners. And this is the entire implementation of value notifier. So if we wanted, we could have implemented the loading state with a new model class based on change notifier. But in this case, the loading state is simply a Boolean value and we want our widget to rebuild when that value changes. So value notifier does exactly what we want here. However, in your own applications, you might want more control on when notify listeners is called. And in those cases, you can implement your own model classes based on change notifier. By the way, if you are familiar with scoped model and have used it before, you should see some similarities here because adding a scoped model to the widget tree is analogous to adding a change notifier provider and adding a scoped model descendant is analogous to adding a consumer. So by taking this class and making some simple adjustments, you could convert it to use scoped model. But if you are already using provider in your projects, then you have already everything you need to handle state in a very similar way to scoped model. Okay, so it's time to do a summary of what we have learned. We started off by describing a simple state management problem where we need to handle a loading state for the signing flow. And we have seen how to use set state, block and value notifier to manage that state. And if we compare how much code we need for the various implementation, then set state requires the least amount of code and block requires the most amount of code and value notifier sits in the middle. And in this particular case, we didn't need to pass any data across widgets because the loading state was local to a single widget. And for this reason, using set state is the simplest and most effective solution. On the other hand, using a block did seem like overkill because we had to write a lot of boilerplate code to set things up. And using a stream to keep track of the loading state also seems excessive here because all we have to do is to switch between true and false. And for that reason, using a value notifier is a simpler approach that works well, despite using a little bit more code than the simple solution we set state. By the way, when I was implementing the drawer menu for this project, I also had to choose a state management technique to keep track of the currently selected option on this list. And initially I used a simple implementation based on set state. However, the problem with that implementation was that the selected option was getting lost after signing in because the entire signing widget with the drawer menu is removed from the widget tree when the home page is returned. And as you can see in the current implementation, I can choose any of these options. And after I sign out and sign back in, then that option is still selected. And to get this working, I used a change notifier provider with a value notifier of option inside the landing page. And this ensures that the currently selected option is retained even when we switch from the signing page to the home page. So the takeaway here is that by using provider or one of its variants, we can choose where to store our state in the widget tree. And we can arrange things so that our state is preserved even when the widgets that use it are removed. And this is not something that we can do easily with stateful widgets and set state. 
So even though change notifier and change notifier provider requires a bit more code than a standard stateful widget implementation, there are cases where it is a preferable option. Okay, so we've come to the end of this video. And if you want, you can check out the entire source code for this project on this address on GitHub. By the way, all the techniques covered in this video are explained in detail and step by step on my Flutter course, which has a strong emphasis on state management. So if you want, you can enroll in this course with the link provided in the description below this video. Finally, you can subscribe on codingwithflutter.com for more tutorials. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.